Dr. Phys, theoretical physics, a short section to talk about a general form for a differential equation that has great interest for physics and engineering. If you consider mechanics and the mass on a spring here attached, when you pull the mass to the right and let it go, you get an oscillation. Force equals the change of momentum with respect to time, Newton's second law, and here the momentum is m times v, and since the mass m of the block is a constant, we can pull that right out, and the derivative of the velocity with respect to time is the acceleration, the famous f equals ma law of Newton. Now Hooke's law gives the following force relation that if you pull to the right with this mass, the force that the spring exerts on the block is to the left, and we're interested in the spring force on the block since we're going to not be touching this block as we're just going to start it off and then let it go. So when we let it go, it's the spring force, the frictional force here, uh, that's important for a left-right motion. Now the frictional force we're going to assume is proportional to the velocity, and of course friction works against you, so we have the minus sign. So Hooke's law, linear restoring force, that if you stretch it a certain distance away, you get a force. If you double the distance from the equilibrium, the force doubles, the famous Hooke's law. And this is a simple assumption to have a model for a vibrating uh, spring, oscillating uh, spring system here with the mass on it. So putting this all together, the force on the block is equal to the spring force plus the force due to the friction and that's your total force, and you set the total force equal to the mass times acceleration, and you get this differential equation here, where you bring the minus signs terms over to the uh, other side of the equation, you have ma plus bv plus kx equals zero, and that's a very, very nice differential equation, which has a second derivative with respect to time, the acceleration, a first derivative with respect to time, the velocity, and no derivative with respect to time, just x by itself. Now mathematicians have looked at a differential equations of this form, and this is similar. In other words, we have a second derivative here. This is now the notation y is a function of x instead of x is a function of time. But you have a second derivative here. You have a first derivative here, and then here you have no derivative of your function. All right, so you simply replaced x by y to get this, and you replace the t by, by x. All right, this is the uh, standard mathematical way of writing things where y is a function of x. So we're looking at a general function of x in front of that derivative. Here is just a constant. A general function of x in front of, say, that, that b. And here's some general function of x in front of uh, this uh, function. So this is very important for physicists since we see that Newton's second law has a second derivative as the highest and then lower derivatives and this has this form. And also the Schrodinger equation is a second order differential equation. We have the second derivative of the wave function with respect to x. So this is covered and see we don't go to any third or fourth derivatives. We haven't encountered that in our laws of of physics that we've looked at here. So this is quite general, and the Dirac equation is a first order equation, so this is covered. So this is a nice equation uh, as a general form for interest in engineering and physics, and we're going to look at solving an equation of this form using the method of Frobenius in our next section.